Sister Denise is one of the first Baba's very precious, special child from the Western world to come to Baba. She's TV presenter, director, writer, so many talents Baba has given to her. She's a world traveler, speaks maybe seven, eight languages. I can't even keep track. And a wonderful, a practical, a very, very honest and a clear sister. And as all of you know, the reason that I am in America is because of Sister Denise. 1997, Sister Denise came to Oxford, where I used to live. And um, she was looking for somebody. She was in Los Angeles. And I, I remember that very well. We were we had a program coming up, Psyche and the Yogi with Yurigela and Dadi Janki. And we're just putting Toli together. And I was just so surprised by her humility in doing Seva with us. And I had no clue that she was looking for somebody. And then she asked up Dadi Janki that I'd like somebody to come with me to Los Angeles. And Dadi Janki says, it's like a shopping place for Kumari London, right? Dadi Janki says, oh, look around, see who, who you like, you know. <laughs> and anyway, past is history. And basically, I give credit to Bap Dada, Sister Denise and Sister Chandru. For, for keeping me here with all my plus and minuses. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much. And we'll be hearing from Sister Denise. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Uh, it's a pleasure that I have experience with Sister Denise that last time when we met for uh, Christmas program, and it's always been my fortune that whatever I ask from Sister Denise in Anubhuti, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Baba makes sure that my request is being honored. So I'm very much honored, Sister Denise, and thankful on behalf of Zoom, Hindi Zoom class. And as I would like to, uh, I would like to really uh, Thank you to accept our invitation because this was the demand from Hindi Zoom as you will be living for Germany. And they requested Hindi Zoom that can we please have her with us. And this is the first time in Hindi Zoom we are having an English class. <laughs> <laughs> On Hindi Zoom we are having an English class and definitely we have Hindi translation available. And as in when we are going to have an extract from Muli, Hindi Muli. So Sister Denise is very much comfortable with Hindi Muli. Uh, she understands Hindi well. So we will be translating those in uh, Hindi and English, both whatever words I use from Hindi Muli. So thank you so much. And let's start our evening on the clarity of birth of Krishna. And uh, as a Brahmin, when we take birth, it's always Baba says that you have two treasures and that's a treasure of thoughts and a treasure of time. And if we do not understand the treasure of time, importance of a treasure of time, we prone to waste a lot of thoughts. And as we see the drama, scene has been changing so fast people have sister denise lots of lots of questions and the first question which people are struggling is about the question of confluence age and in one of the extract of murli uh, about the duration of confluence age which is a murli of Fourth of these all are the extract of Muli recently. Baba mentioned about the time and birth of Krishna and five thousand years cycle. So we are going to have we will quote that and on that we can uh, go in further 
clarification. So mm-hmm. on the Murli of 4th of October 2021, Baba said, Ab Sangam hai, Baap Jasti Samai nahi rehte hai, Fir bhi, So Varsh to lagte hai. Uthal Pathal Puri ho, Fir Rajya Shuru ho jata hai. So Varsh ke andar, सब खलास हो जाता है संगम युग को कम से कम 100 वर्ष तो चाहिए ना राइट कम से कम मींस इट कुड बी मोर यस सो सो या हाउ लॉन्ग डू वी हैव देयर वाज अनदर मर्ली इन व्हिच um Many people were asking Baba, what's the date of destruction? And he said, why, you want me to leave or what? (laughs) You don't like me? (laughs) And that stopped people a little bit. But there is this feeling within the Brahmin family. And after all, this is a school. And normally in school, you know the date of the exam, but you don't know the question. In this school, you know the question, but you don't know the date. (laughs) So let's look at the question. What is our question in our final exam? And he says the exam duration is one second. And the question is, can you handle an attack, full-on big attack from the five vices altogether the five elements of matter all together and plenty of ghosts. Can you handle that in one second? And that will be the second where you leave the body. So this is your final exam, but you don't know the date. Is that okay? Are you ready? (laughs) I don't think so. Anybody would like to know whether the conference is ready or now. (laughs) Anyway, um, uh, the other thing that we have noticed, I, I'm going to go a little bit beyond the Murli that you quoted, but every so often in Avyakta Murlis, Baba has said, do you need more time? Mm-hmm. Shall I give you six months more, one year more? And that was years ago. So he's always, ever since the beginning of Gyan, uh, at the very, very beginning, he said, you will not see another Diwali. Right. So you had to be ready within one year. When I came in Gyan, it was about April of 1974. And at that time, uh, the statement told to me is destruction in 1976. So I said, mm, uh, that's not much time. I have two years to become karmati, to avyakt, uh, the whole bit, you know. So uh, I better surrender uh, right now. And then uh, Daddy Janki said, no, 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 you can't surrender. I said, why not? He said, you couldn't make it. I said, watch me. (laughs) Of course I'll make it. You're telling me two years? (laughs) I have to. And this has always been Baba's um, method. He's always been telling us, you don't have time. Because he understands human psychology and that we are uh, procrastinators. We put it off and put it off and put it off. Or at least, even if we do everything. And and I tell you another thing that I did um, Because at that time, when we had just two years to be perfect and complete and everything, I said to Baba, you know, Baba, two years is really very short. I want 25 years. And then at the end of 25 years, I sat down and I did a deep personal inventory of myself to find out uh, how we're doing. And how close am I to the um, perfection stage? And I looked very honestly, very deeply at myself, and I said, uh, in conclusion, 
Uh, in order for me to reach this stage that Baba's talking about, I need probably two, three kalpas. <laughs> if I go at the current rate. So I need to increase my speed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you like to know how you're doing, right? And because this is a race, and, um, you know, as you said, we need at least 100 years, and it's been going on 50 for me, you know, so we don't have much more time. Uh, whether it's 100 years for everybody or 100 years for all of us together or what, but anyway at least a hundred years. In the beginning, he used to say 50 to a hundred years. Um, and then the other thing is that the destruction is not at the end of the confluence age, it's in the middle. Wow. And that means, you know, if the confluence age is a hundred years and the destruction is in the middle, we've gone past the middle, and so maybe the destruction is today or tomorrow, so that we've got a little bit of confluence age left for the reconstruction. So it's all very, you know, tight in terms of time. But the thing is, um, you know, when I was doing this extremely deep um, inventory of the self, I said, you know, I do every single day without missing, full on awake Amrit Bela. Every single day, Murli, all the traffic controls, Bog, Bath, um, Numasham, uh, Batis, this, that, go to Madhaban twice a year, whatever. I do everything. And still, it's not fast enough. So I said, hmm, what are we going to do about this? What is the meaning of Tivra Purusharat? You know, they say always in English translation, intense effort. Mm -hmm. But Tivra Gati means high speed. Right. So I thought, okay, he's talking about high speed effort. So then we have to think, what is the meaning of speed? Because if you go at a very fast speed, you arrive at your destination quicker, presumably. So what is rocket speed? 10,000 miles per second. Did you know that? Not until you say. So, and we don't want to go at donkey speed, right? <laughs> it's really <laughs> slow. So he says sometimes rocket speed. So, you know, that's okay. 10,000 miles a second. How do we do high-speed effort? And so, of course, it has to be the quality of effort, um, what you do with your time. And many people say to me, oh, you're very antisocial. You don't, you know, hang around and have fun and this and that. And, you know, <laughs> that's not very good. I said, well, you know, uh, we don't have time. <laughs> we, we will have lots of picnics in the golden age. We'll be fine. But for now, we have to shift consciousness. And, of course, one thing that was very interesting in today's Murli, you remember today's Murli, Baba said that in five minutes, I can check all the BKs yes. in five minutes, wherever they are, in uh, India or in foreign countries. So that's high speed. And because he operates at the speed of thought. So we also have to um, make sure that the quality of our thought is really good. And that we do not, like, for example, he says, if you take time to go from experiencing something that disturbs your ego to being independent and detached from that, that's low. It has to be instant. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I started thinking about things like that. And then in that case, if the confluence age is very fast and we don't have much time, that's okay. 
Then there's other things, you know, what is time? Is chronological time, we have 5,000 years, and all the other people say you can't have 5,000 years because we've got fossils that are older than that and stuff like that. But it's like, it doesn't matter because um, the uh, drama that we are in where is the drama? Have you ever asked yourself this question? Where is the drama? It's within the soul. Well, exactly. So the drama is in your soul. Mm -hmm. And your soul has a 5,000-year maximum drama time span. And um, everything that you see and hear and experience and feel and everything is all in your soul. And... Uh, uh, what's happening now is rewind back to the beginning. Right. Because what is parivartan? Parivartan, normally everybody says parivartan is transformation, right? But I said, mm, no, that doesn't fit. It has to be something different. And then I did check all these words, right, in all these dictionaries that have now appeared online. Mm -hmm. So one interpretation of Parivartan, which I like, uh, is that you return to your um, original condition. Like you press the factory reset button. Okay. And that's Parivartan. So you just have to go back in time very fast. Uh, you said three reset button? Factory. Factory. You know, you have your uh, in iPhone. Right. And there's a button for factory reset. Factory reset. You press that and it goes all the way back to its original condition. So what we have to do is press the button of I'm a soul remembering sheep, Baba, that takes us back to the beginning. And we don't have to make effort to become pure from impure. That takes too long, way too long. We don't have that kind of time. We have to return to a, how it was to be me <clears throat> before anything ever happened. Mm. And that's just one thought away. Because after all, he says Jivan Mukti in one second. second there has yeah. to be a meaning of that that's practical. That was the question that why Baba said that uh, have Jivan Mukti in one second? Because it only what? takes one second to realize, but it takes a lot of seconds to get to the point where you realize it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so we need time because of that. But otherwise, you know, uh, all of this when you look at it in terms of the gyan itself as a system, it is completely accurately self-contained, but it's not the same as perception mm. of reality through sense organs. And usually I ask everybody, did you read the Gita? And they all say, yes, we read the Gita. And then I say, did you really read the Gita? And they say, well, no, we didn't. <laughs> So I thought, that's interesting, you know, because um, if you actually read the Gita, there's a lot of stuff in there mm -hmm. that is absolutely interesting if you look at it in the context of the Murli, because much of the Murli is quote from the Gita, much of it, you see. Like, did you know you're... Your, you are your own best friend or your own worst enemy. Yeah, that comes from the Gita, Gita. right? But most people don't know that, you see. But there's other things that people don't know. And um, uh, uh, it will come through many, many different quotes that are there that fit with the Murli so that you can see that this... Um, uh, reality as sense perception, what we are all used to in body consciousness, that gives you a different time frame mm. than if you think that the whole 5,000 years is in your soul. 
And what it says in the Gita is your problem is uh, sense perception. And how do you, as you said, that it takes one second to realize, but there is a process to have that realization of sense perception. But how, how do people just like, because we have a lot of people who have just started understanding Muli, started understanding deeper aspect of Gyan. So right. how would you define them that sense perception? Well, you know, it really deeper. isn't about telling something it. Because if I say, you know, uh, in the Gita, it says sense perception is your problem. And they will say, yes, sense perception is a problem. Yeah. But uh, to get to a mentality where you can perceive, which is not sense perception, that's very subtle. Right? See what I mean? This is not easy Raj Yoga. I don't know who came up with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not because even I checked the word sahaj right. because you know what's easy about raj yoga it's very subtle very deep and so I checked the word sahaj mm -hmm. in the dictionary and there are many 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 different words that you could use for sahaj and there's one which I found very re relevant very appropriate and sahaj has one meaning, which is like this, that you're doing this practice in the context of people mm -hmm. uh, with whom you have a plenty of karmic accounts. That is one meaning of sahaj, which means difficult. Definitely. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and <laughs> Baba says... <laughs> <laughs> and Baba says that the opposite of Sahaj Raj Yoga is the Sannyasi's Hatha Yoga. And so there is a, a, another set of opposites, like there is Pravruti Marg and Nirvruti Marg. Mm -hmm. And so Baba says to us, oh, the Nirvruti Marg people is difficult. Right. Why is it difficult? Because they have to they do all these exercises them. and whatnot. And then he says, this is easy, and we go along with it. But then we have to say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean this is easy? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's easy. Oh, very easy. Excuse me. That's his, you know, yukti to get us to think this is easy and and be willing to do it on the basis that it's easy because if we were told it was difficult we wouldn't we do it right, right. Yeah. except for me i had a different situation when i uh, discovered a raj yoga it was not in brahma kumaris i was in searching for truth and all and i came across raj yoga and i f i was um finding that Raj Yoga is the most difficult thing that you can do out of anything in the world. So then I said, okay, that's for me. <laughs> because I thought if it's easy, it's not worth doing. Exactly. And so for me, easy Raj Yoga being difficult was actually all right. So you were comfortable with it. <laughs> Very comfortable. <clears throat> anyway, so the confluence age is a um, is a state of consciousness that is superimposed on the Iron Age and the Golden Age, right? Mm -hmm. Because the destruction is in the middle of it. Right. So that means it's still the confluence age after destruction. Mm -hmm. But by that time, we're not doing Purusharat. Right. Because once you get to destruction, game over. So what do you mean by game over? Game over means you can't take any more power from no Shiv Baba. Baba. Oh. So no yoga? But no. No Modi? No. You don't need yoga and Modi by that time. You've already had your exam result. Now, you may survive the destruction. There are some who will. 
Because along with how long is the confluence age, people ask who will survive. Right. Right? So who will survive, you know? No. Shall I tell? Please. <laughs> A few BKs, we don't know which. Mm -hmm. um, some scientists. Mm -hmm. Some um, ordinary people in India. No one will survive out of India. And um, then there will be new people and the uh, advance party. So the scientists, because they're very sensible people and they know what happens in nuclear war, a good place to be is in a spaceship because it's out of the way. So they spend the destruction in a spaceship and then they come down and they arrive in India because it's the only place where there's any people. Okay. So those scientists, uh, they're going to be ex-BKs? No, they're going to be scientists. Right. Who knows whether they're ex-BKs, non-BKs, going to be BKs, cooperative souls, who knows what, but they're basically scientists and they will have with them all the new materials, mm. all the high-tech, whatever you need, because in the golden age, we're going to need clean nuclear energy-powered Viman, which are child-proof. So we, uh, how can we make those? We can't make those. So they will set up the factories and because we need lots of Vimans, right? You've got a one-seater, two-seater, and a four-seater. So you need a big garage for them in your palace. Um, then uh, you have architects for the palaces. And Baba had described the architecture of the golden age, which is eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. So that the design of the palaces takes into consideration the position of the sun and the moon through the day and the night. So that you have maximum pleasant experience in your palace and the lighting is hidden you don't have light bulbs in the golden age uh, sometimes he says you have a single candle and diamonds all around which um, amplifies it sometimes he says the light is hidden and uh, you know there's sort of very uh, high tech elements in the golden age people don't realize that heaven is high tech if you see any pictures of heaven you don't see any high tech anything we will not need telephones because we all communicate by telepathy so if you want to go visit somebody you send a thought i'm coming and you get a reply welcome <laughs> there you come on your viman which flies at the speed of a phone call so that's very high tech, you know? And so the scientists are very necessary for us. And whether they're BKs or non-BKs or whatever, it doesn't really matter by that time. But the thing that's important is, Baba says this is Raj Yoga, and out of the millions, a few, and out of those few, a, ha a tiny handful will become the kings. So Krishna is the number one king. So in that line, on 20th of July, 2021, Baba mentioned in the Muli that Krishna ki atma garbh mein aai, churpur hui, aur us samay se lekar 5,000 varsh ka hisab shuru ho jata hai. Hmm. Yes. So the soul comes in an existing embryo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the embryo is like four or five months old. And then all the bits and pieces, eyes and nose, feet, hands, they're ready by that time. And so then the soul comes and churpur. Mm. Right. And then he comes out very comfortably in the normal manner, but without labor pains and all of that. 
because the mother is pure and he is pure. He's a higher level than his mother and father, right? Yes. But his mother and father, who will be the parents of Krishna? This yeah. is a big question. That's a big question, yeah. And so some people say, you know, some people have said, okay, mama will be the mother of Krishna because he is not sustained by his mother. He's sustained by somebody else, right? Mm. And so then she could uh, give birth and then leave the body and come again mm, as Radhe. So this is one, one possibility. Mm. Uh, then uh, some have said, um, Bo will be the father of Krishna. Who? The uh, Vishwakishore? Oh. Uh, Bhau. 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 Sorry, I don't pronounce Hindi very well. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And uh, so this is a possibility. A possibility. Mm -hmm. And um, it makes sense. And he is uh, high, but not higher than Brahma Baba, right? But Baba, uh, in one of the Murli Baba said that on 3rd of October 2015 Murli, Baba mentioned that Krishna's parents are not... In Hindi, I bolo. Hindi, I bolo? Mm. Okay. So... वैसे जब बुरे कर्म करने वाले बिल्कुल खत्म हो जाते हैं फिर स्वर्ग स्थापन होता है छाट छूट कर तमो प्रधान जो भी होते हैं वो खत्म हो जाते हैं नए देवताएं आना शुरू हो जाते हैं कृष्ण का जन्म होता है तब तक बदली सदली होती है जब कोई भी चीची नहीं रहेगा तब कृष्ण आएगा और तब तक तुम आते जाते रहेंगे कृष्ण को रिसीव करने वाले माँबाप भी पहले से चाहिए ना फिर सब अच्छे अच्छे रहेंगे बाकी चले जाएंगे तभी उसे स्वर्ग कहा जाएगा तुम कृष्ण को रिसीव करने वाले रहेंगे भल तुम्हारा छीछी जन्म होगा क्योंकि रावण राज्य है शुद्ध जन्म तो हो नहीं सकता कृष्ण बिल्कुल गुलगुल नई दुनिया में आएंगे कृष्ण का नाम उनके माँबाप से बाला है कृष्ण के माँबाप का नाम इतना बाला नहीं है कृष्ण से पहले जिनका जन्म होता है वो योग बल से जन्म नहीं कहेंगे बट यू सी वट यू हैव इन दिस अडली बडली दिस पीरियड ऑफ ट्रांजिशन सो एट द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट वी हैव a fairly large group of people that we call the advanced party mm -hmm. who are the dadis who have left the body and who is in the subtle regions is only brahma baba nobody else okay and he is there because it's a special part for avyakta bab dada to come and speak to us and then some people thought, well, when Avyak Bhaktada is not coming anymore, then it means he's taken birth, but right. it doesn't. He hasn't. It doesn't need to take birth yet. It's not time. Hmm. He's there. And Dadi Gulzar, Dadi Janki, the, all these Dadis and high-level BKs, they go in the advance party. That means they take birth. Hmm. And every so often, Baba can pull the soul in their previous body's subtle body mm -hmm. and do something through them. He can do that. There is a rumor going on, which is a rumor, that's why I said rumor, that, that the Gulzar is, has not taken birth or she is still in the subtle world. No, 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 no reason for her to be there. Okay. You know, she will take birth whenever she takes birth. And she may or may not still be in the subtle world, but generally speaking, it is um, the system would be for her to come on. Come on. Yes. And the only person Baba has really told us about is Daddy Prakash Mani. And we know that Daddy Prakash Mani is a little boy, mm -hmm. and he must be since 2007 to 2022. How old is that? 
15. Yeah. So he's a 15 year old boy. We know that he studies in English mm -hmm. and he speaks Hindi. And we know that his father is an advisor to the Indian government and that they do not live in Delhi. That we know. And that Daddy Prakash Mani, this character, this boy, is an extraordinary person. And that his father listens to him for giving advice. So this is much more information than what Baba's given about the other daddies or Didi Man Mohini or everything. He just said they're advanced party. And what he has said is that they kind of know each other and that they meet when there are um, kind of official occasions. So we know, according to calculation, that they must be in very high-level royal families. And we know that the Indian kings know who they are. The royal families are there. And that they do not like any kind of publicity. They stay fully away from the media. Media is off-limits. And that they are a very, very exclusive social group. Mm. And that a lot of them are wealthy, um, as well as being royal, but they keep behind the curtain. Yeah. And so these advanced party souls would take birth in those kind of families. And so Baba is infiltrating the royal families of India by inserting high quality BK souls in there and um, altering the configuration of people in those families. And that's how they, are, they might be connected. There is so a connection connected. between the daddies. Yeah, uh, because I, when they have daddies. marriages, right. they invite each other. You know, it's like the British royal family is like that. You know, you can't just go in and have a nice cup of tea with the queen, not so easily. Right. <laughs> and uh, the Indian royals are more exclusive than the British royals. Because the British royals are known to the public and everything, but the Indian royals are known to each other. Right. And, <clears throat> and then... Um, What Baba had said is that a time will come when the BKs meet the advance party. Yes. And so that means that, you know, BKs are quite um, focused on having a connection with very royal high family. VIPs and royal family. So it's very natural for that to happen. And so there will be some highly positioned BKs who may have contact with these people. And at some point, whenever it's the right time in drama, that will happen. Because um, uh, before that, mm -hmm. or somewhere at some point, uh, there will be martial law in India. Martial law means military rule. A military rule will happen uh, at the time of civil war. Uh, because when you have civil war, like really bad civil war, uh, the government gets toppled. And the war will be religious war, Hindu-Muslim war, uh, reminiscent of the partition Uh, the consequences of partition. There was a lot of bloodshed between Hindus and Muslims after 1947, right? Yes, but uh, nuclear war, war will be before that civil war? Who knows? You know, because nuclear war is a 15-minute activity. So it's boom. <clears throat> and... Um, he has said that nuclear war will take out Russia, America, presumably China, Africa, Australia, Europe, you know, and, and the only thing remaining is India the with Dabari human beings. Yadavs? Yadavs, yeah. Yadavs, yeah. Yeah. Yadavs do this. And so, um, and he has said that the um, Muslim people will overrun India and take over India 
even if only for one day, but it will happen. And um, it seems to me that after that, there will be martial law. Because, you know, when, when you have a religious war, it's particularly violent because you do things in the name of God more enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, really, really traumatic. But you can imagine that the royals in their out-of-the-way palaces mm -hmm. will not be touched. Right. And they will know about it, but not all of them will know about it, what's going on. Because, you know, this kind of thing is so traumatic. The other thing that will be happening at the same time is natural calamities. So mm, calderas. So, you know, this volcano that blew up in Tonga just recently. So that was a caldera. That was not a normal volcano. Yeah. And that caldera, there are a few other calderas on the planet. A caldera is like a super volcano. And there's one caldera in Yellowstone Park in the United States. If that blows, it destroys six or seven states and all whatever's in it. That's big. There's another caldera in the Mediterranean. If that goes, it takes out all the countries that are around the Mediterranean. That's big. And a few other calderas, I can't remember where they are, but um, huge. And when these things go, you know, you can imagine the kinds of tsunamis. So these tsunamis, you know, they, they take out wholesale. And what Baba had said is that the nuclear bombs unleash the natural calamities. Because they are very strong. And the earth is very stable. It's quite difficult to mess up the earth. But if you throw nuclear bombs, you know, in some of these uh, delicate areas, boom, it'll start opening up the magma from the core of the earth and, and it really moves the tectonic plates. But India is a tectonic plate by itself. So if they move around, India will move around with it without breaking up. Hmm. So that's pretty good. It's like a diamond-shaped tectonic plate. And then you know that there's a story about the ocean will bring you talis full of diamonds. Right. So that happens in those situations. Because where do you build diamonds? Yeah. Several kilometers below the earth. Yeah. And so when you start moving around the earth at that level, yeah. all these crystals will come up and the sea will bring them, not on plates, but right, on, platefuls. On <laughs> And so this um, incredible wealth of gold and diamonds and all these other things which are created deep in the earth will be presented to the deities. And that will be your building materials. Because he says your, your palaces are made of bricks of gold. That means that's a lot of gold, you see. And I'm not quite sure why we should have palaces of bricks of gold, but there must be some good reason, right? Maybe for lights. I don't know, but we'll see at that time. And so at the same time, you see, for the human beings to handle this is very difficult. So the only people who will not be traumatized will be the space people, because mm -hmm. they're a yeah, little yeah. distant, and the BKs. And then the royals who are protected. But only, but as Baba said, only few BKs? Or? Well, what's a few? We don't know what's a few. It could be anything. Five Pandavas is a handful. How many Pandavas are there? One million. You know, that's a few. <laughs> but it's quite a few. So we don't know. You know, Baba speaks in round figures. And even a hundred years is a round figure, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, um, he, he gives us enough information for us to have a picture of it. And he tells us that you need to really be aware about all this in advance so that you are not totally traumatized by the destruction. Because you don't know if you are one of the ones who has to leave the body in destruction, before destruction, or after destruction. You have no idea. You will know at that time. But you have to be ready to go now or that time or later, whatever it is. And the main thing is that... Um, because we've been told about destruction every day since we came in Kyan, we're used to the idea. Uh, we have been told we are immortal, so we're not afraid of death, make sure. And uh, we will go to Baba. Okay, we go to Baba. And then we will reincarnate according to our karma and our study. Right? Two days ago, Murli, according to Sanskara and study. And whatever status you will get, you will know. And then the whole thing starts again. And in the middle of all of this, the birth of Krishna, you see. And definitely it will be in a protected place. Mm. Definitely in a royal palace. Definitely with royals all around him. And when he says you will receive Krishna, it could be you in an advanced party format, mm -hmm. you in a demigod format, mm -hmm. right? Demigod is like, okay, Krishna is the first birth of a child through yoga power. Right. Because so Bhav which BK has enough yoga power to produce a child? Mama. There's nobody else. So this is a reason to think that she may be the one who is the mother of Krishna because nobody else has that level of yoga power to produce a child by yoga power. Right? right. And did she carry that yoga power over from the birth of Mama into this birth? Yeah. Not being decayed, let's say? Yes, she would carry that power because she has taken rebirth. Right. And that's why Baba said here that Krishna's parent has not taken birth from yoga birth. Baba. Right. So Mama, she left the body 64, 65, right? So how old is she now? 50 something. Right. 60. Now, if you're 60 and you produce a child, that's not normal. Normal, yeah. Right? <laughs> And But there are stories about that, yeah, yeah. you know, and you produce a child by yoga power, you could. But then you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't carry on. And to produce a child by yoga power, maybe you will die right afterwards. Hmm. We don't know, but it's conceivable. And we know that Krishna is sustained, not by his mother, by somebody else. Right. So why not by his mother? She would die. And if she is going to become Radhe, then it's convenient to produce Krishna, then die, then take rebirth in uh, three, four years because she will be younger than him, right, hmm. as Radhe. Meanwhile, there'll be other BKs hmm. who are able to produce children by yoga power but the top one is Krishna, and he's the first one. Right? And those BKs may not be BKs. They may be in the next birth. Yes. So this is why I call them demigods. Demigods. So demigod means you're partly a deity, but not completely a deity, because your body mm -hmm. is still produced by right. normal arrangements. But you have, you're a high yogi, so you have that yoga power that you can have a body made of normal matter, means quite good quality, but still not subtle pradhan, and that you have yoga power and you can produce a child by yoga power. This is possible. Very few, but 
enough. You mentioned, but I'm reconfirming again, but the birth process is a normal process because Baba say there will be Garba Mahal. Yes. So what is Garba Mahal? It's Garba, but it is um, good. No illnesses, no bad arrangements between the parents is comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when the child comes out, the mother's body opens up suitably and the child comes out without any problem. So there is no crying. So there is no, no crying, labor no pain crying. and no blood. Right. And uh, like that, you know. So, I mean, Baba said, I do not do anything against the laws of nature. Hmm. So everything is natural. And BKs all want to know, how do we make children by yoga yeah. power? And he says, <laughs> you think I'm going to tell you? I'm not going to tell you. What do you think? I am some kind of nitwit. <laughs> I know you too well. I am not going to tell you. You will find out what to do and you'll do it at, at that time. And uh, then another question they have is about like, okay, Krishna is born it's with yoga power. But how, uh, like when Baba talks about the first population of gold, golden age will be 900,000. Well, there's one more thing we have to say before we do that. Okay. And that is that, you know, you're having a child because you get a vision. Right. Baba did mention that. Right. So if we go along further with the idea that mama is the mother of Krishna at the age of 60 something mm -hmm. or 70, she will get a vision and that will make it happen. So still she, Baba, is, he has the key to visions, right? He's not going to give that away. So there's something in there. And you see what's also there, remember we talked a lot about stuff in Christianity at Christmas. Yeah. So the Virgin Mary has a vision. vision. Yeah. And this is why in Christianity they're so fixed that his mother has to be a virgin because if it's only from a virgin birth that you can be the Christ, you see, except that he says there's a big connection between Christ, Christ and, and Krishna. Krishna. They have the same Rashi and everything. And this is because the stories of Krishna were taken and applied to Christ, but they actually applied to Krishna, including that vision. So the first deity soul is born by yoga power to a mother who had a vision, which presumably is given to her by God, you see. And then the kings are kings by divine right. You know, in England, there is a, a thing called the divine right of kings. You know about that? Mm -hmm. uh, so this was, I can't remember how long ago, but a long time ago, they created a charter. Mm -hmm. in which they said that you are a king because God made you a king. And if God made you a king, that's your divine right, right. you see. And um, in Raj Yoga, who makes you into kings? God, right. you see. And so what do people do? They steal everything from India, including ideas right. and stories and memorials and everything and everything, which is all fixed in the drama. And so it has to be like that. But what he is telling us is the reality of everything. And then we have to understand it. So he speaks to us and we understand it little by little. And then gradually we understand it properly. But it takes time because our consciousness is Tamil Pradhan. Our intellect is Tamil Pradhan. And by absorbing power from Shiv Baba, the intellect slowly becomes Sato Pradhan from Tamil Pradhan. Then you can understand what he's talking about in a way which is different than when you understand what Baba's saying through the lens of your experience of bhakti. Because he speaks to those who have completed their bhakti, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so if you've completed your bhakti, it means you've read all the scriptures, you've done all the rituals, been on all the pilgrimages, and you know everything upside down and backwards. Mm. And that means you're a high-quality bhakta. And then the fruit of bhakti is jnana. So to make the shift from bhakti to jnana is a shift of consciousness, a shift of comprehension, a shift of processing ideas. Mm. And so all of these things are all happening at the same time. And the intensification is getting more and more intense and faster and faster. Mm. And we have to stay steady and balanced mm. while this is going on. Mm. And... Uh, so we all think about it all the time. And because who am I? No idea. Who are you? No idea. <laughs> who is he? Uh, we have a bit of an idea, but not too much. And every day, every day, every day, he's telling us. And um, what speeds everything up? He, he sometimes says time. So when the circumstances become so extreme, they open up people's intellect. Mm -hmm. So there is merit in understanding it before time. He often says that. But, of course, most people will understand it at the time. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is understand it before time. So that is okay. So uh, that's what Ben Baba said in the, says in the Murli, that the destruction will means the transformation will start in a fast speed when everybody will get the message that God has arrived. So how is that going to happen? Yeah, um, one thing that Baba has said is there will be many rehearsals. Right. And then he also said there will be a dress rehearsal. Yes. And a dress rehearsal in a play is... Exactly like the play, but it's yes. called the dress rehearsal. Yes. So you do everything. And in Germany, mm -hmm. there are many people who have different prophecies. Mm -hmm. And one of the prophecies is that there will be nuclear war, mm -hmm. third world war, and then fourth world war. So I thought to myself, and this is just me, mm -hmm. that could be. This third world war, nuclear war, mm. is dress rehearsal. And one thing Baba had said is between the dress rehearsal and the final, there'll be two years. And during those two years, everybody will get the message. Mm. Because if you have a nuclear exchange mm. between United States and Russia, mm. Yeah, you, 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 it's unimaginable what it would be, but whatever it is, it would be a gigantic amount of dead. Mm -hmm. It would be a heavy shock. If you remember when the uh, nuclear bombs were dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan, it stopped the war by shock. And now, what people are really worried about is. Um, Ukraine. Yeah, recently. Because right where they are, Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, that is the same place as where all the nuclear bombs are stockpiled. Because I've been there in a place called Kaliningrad. They're in there. And, and people know that, you see. And so they are standing on top of these bombs. Mm -hmm facing each other, mm. and the media is not telling you all this stuff, but I just happen to know, mm. and it's a very, very dangerous moment because the perception is that uh, Putin wants to reclaim all the territory that was part of USSR, which includes Ukraine and Estonia, Latvia, etc., many places. Mm -hmm. And this is his intention, and it's known that that's what he wants. And uh, 
America doesn't want that. And so now you have this buildup of troops. And what happened in the beginning of the Second World War is you had Hitler, mm. who said, uh, I think we'll take Austria. Mm. So he walked into Austria and took it mm. without any drop of bloodshed. Mm. And Austria was annexed. And then Czechoslovakia, mm. you see. And then um, at a certain point, uh, the uh, other people, the allies, said, wait a minute, you can't do that. We're going to start. And they declare war. Mm. And so if Putin is doing this, it's very similar. Mm. So, okay, if he takes Ukraine, mm. and Belarus has already got a government which is pro-Putin, uh, because what happened when... Uh, in USSR, they took these lands. They put a large population of Russians there. I've been to all these places. And um, so in the voting, mm. the Russians are enough to vote pro-Russia. Pro -Russia. And um, so in 2014, he annexed Crimea. And nobody did anything. And Crimea is especially positioned in the Black Sea next to Ukraine. And if he takes Ukraine and Belarus, and it's like, excuse me, we're back to war. Wow. And that is why the um, NATO countries are so like this. And they have, 12 countries have said, okay, take out your people from this country because we will not be able to uh, evacuate you. Because if Russia starts shooting from Russian soil mm. to Ukraine, mm. they don't need any soldiers. They've got such rockets and such guns, such weapons. And America has such weapons. You don't need to send in any soldiers. You just point your... Uh, on the computer. <laughs> on the it. computer and you do computer you games. <laughs> That's it. That's all. But the <laughs> blood is real. Blood. Blood Everything is real. else is... Everything is a zero. So people are really afraid. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so we are right now at a dangerous moment. And today there was a very big earthquake in Guam, 6.3, you know. So it's like it's all beginning to get a little shaky. Sure. And then, you know, all these uh, Mount Everest is melting and uh, Greenland is melting and the sea is rising and the uh, poles are melting and the earth is getting very unstable, and people are getting unstable. And uh, uh, it's, you know, if you add it all together and you say, okay, where is this, you know, wh what is the trend? The trend is collapse. Mm -hmm. And so the people in power will communicate to the public that it's dangerous but not that bad mm. because they don't want the public to panic. Mm -hmm. But it may be quite bad. And um, so what we can say as BKs mm. is we have to look at our poor Sharat and say, you know, am I there? You know, if I have to leave the body right now, how how will I be? Can I handle the five vices all at once? The five elements of matter all at once and a couple of ghosts or more? You know, how is my yoga? Uh, have I used my time properly or did I fool around all day? having a nice picnic or whatever, you know, and um, 
So, so it's a good moment to really look and see, you know, if I would leave the body right now, what kind of deity do I take birth as? How, how is my karmic account settlement going? How it, have I served adequately? Is my mind pure? Um, you know, so it's a good time for us to really look and say, okay, if it's now, is it good? But uh, uh, this is when I, like, at the speed I we see uh, our Brahmin family is doing Purushat, which we don't know. Everybody's Purushat says they know. Abba said, Gur jane, gur ki gutri jane. Mm. But the speed, how it's going to, like at the time of transformation, uh, how it's going to be, uh, how all of a sudden all the BKs are going to wake up and they are going to do a fast Purusha, uh, Tivra Purusha or something? Well, or when, I, when you get a big shake, hmm. and because there's another thing which has been spoken about, and that is the shaking of the BK tree. Hmm. So sometimes people speak about that. Sometimes Baba has said, the tree will shake. There will be three whistles, you know. Mm -hmm. And so at the moment, the BK tree is not shaking, right? Right. But it's possible some unimaginable thing can happen. And he told that he gave us many warnings. Achanak. Achanak. Achanak what? Achanak, achanak. Just could be anything. Well, whatever you think, it won't be that. It'll be something else. So there's no point in thinking if I won't be able to figure it out. So I won't think, but achanak. So, okay. But achanak means like COVID was pretty achanak, right? And uh, I remember... Um, you know, when Daddy Jenki, when she left the body, that was about the time when COVID started, yes. right? And I was uh, just here in uh, California the day of the lockdown. I came right. here. And, um, and I stayed quite some time and we were locked down, but it changed the world. But we do not know because it's still locked down. It's just coming out now. After two years, we do not know what the world is going to be like when all the COVID rules are off, because it will not be the same. Because in the meantime, there have been changes um, in the economy, in the political setup, in the movement of goods, and many things, you know, have changed. And I, I think we won't really feel it, really realize it for a little while. But then it's like the world will not be as it was before COVID. So there'll be like a before COVID and after COVID. And that was an Achanak thing which shifted. Mm -hmm. And any other Achanak thing can happen. We don't know. There is so much that we know and there is so much that we don't know. And But we have faith that whatever we need to know, Baba has told us. So what do we need to know? Be soul conscious. Mm -hmm. Remember Baba. Mm -hmm. Spin the cycle. Be pure. Shrimad. Four. And then uh, be subtle. Uh, catch Baba's signal. Because many people are saying, okay, no daddies, no Baba, what? Yeah, and you said catch Baba's signal, mm. and I remember you said yesterday night that for that you need clean internet. Yeah, okay. you need to check. And uh, uh, can you? Would you like to share that which you shared with me yesterday night? I like it because I think I can't remember what it was. What was it? What I said? You said that okay. Whenever. Uh, if you are curious, that's how we started that. I, I asked you what if people are curious to know these things. And you said, where is the curiosity is coming from? And why you are asking those questions and why you have those questions. And when mm -hmm. you go deeper and deeper and you drill it down, you have to check. Yeah. And, and what I was saying is that 
sometimes people are people want to know more than other people to be more important. That's true. But that's not really a clean intellect. Because, you know, what should be, or what, how would you describe the highest possible motivation mm. for doing this? And so my thought is, well, if you're motivated by love for God and love for humanity, that's very clean. Mm. And so... I mean, I, I for a long time I have defined it like that, that if you have love for God and love for humanity and nothing else, that's very good motivation. And yeah, for that you do not have to be, you know, like Baba said that even mothers can do that. Like, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like it is not something which is like you need a lot and lot of, because people have their own limitation of churning of gyan. They don't know. Definitely. But love yeah. is, um, is in the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's why you do what you do because of love. I mean, anybody can qualify for that. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's a very good um, way to make a triage of number wise uh, but also he wants us to understand the knowledge because he wants to make us into kings mm -hmm. now that means he's going to give you power yeah. and if you get power what are you going to do because power is very toxic and it will corrupt you and you should know how to you have to know how to handle toxic material. Yes. Yes. And so if you have a motive of a pure heart, mm -hmm. you may be able to handle power. But you also have to be wise mm -hmm. because you could be too innocent. That won't work. So you have to be very pure, very wise, and, and uh, competent. You know, Baba uses this word layak. Layak is a compass. And layak um, in English morally is always translated as worthy. And I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. And I checked. Uh, it's a Sindhi word. And I spoke to Sindhi people about this word. And they told me that the word layak is used in the context of business. Mm -hmm. And that it refers to whether you're competent in the world of business. And I thought, yeah, that, that's really good. Because worthy, um, if you tell the word worthy to an English-speaking person with a Christian background, they will hear unworthy. Yeah. Um, because um, the religion, to a large extent, is telling people you're impure, right. you have done a lot of sins, yeah. you're unworthy, and you have to repent for your sins and surrender to God, and then he will fix you up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they speak of this word absolution of sins, right. your sins will be absolved, absolved, you see, and I don't like that word because Baba doesn't absolve anybody of any sins. You have to absolve yourself of your own sins. Right. And in Christianity, the concept of sin is like this, that if you surrender to Jesus Christ, he will take away your sins. That's why he died on the cross. Mm. And she, Baba, says nothing doing. That's not how it works. I will not take away your sins. You sit down and meditate and take away your own sins. All right? Right, yeah. So that's not called absolution. Absolution is somebody else will take away so, your sins. So we, we do not have to wait that, we do not have to meditate. It's a very good point you mentioned because people think that, oh, because I have this problem, I have to meditate and Baba is going to take care of it and it's going to burn away and he is going to burn my vikarma. Sure, yeah. But I think it's actually better if you look at it in a different way that why 
do you do a sin in the first place? And my conclusion about it is you do a sin because you don't have enough spiritual power. Mm. You're um, from Sola Kala Sampura and you become zero Kala. What? You don't have energy of spirituality. Mm. So you do a sin because of that. Mm. And if you are in BK and you don't meditate adequately, you start doing sins again because you don't have enough yoga power. But if you keep up the accumulation of yoga, because what Baba does tell us is Maya will start to attack you from the moment you become a BK. You have a short honeymoon first. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Yeah. <laughs> you are going to go in trance. You are going to whatever. Trance. So you you got the sample. You bought the ice cream, and then Maya says, "All right, I know my job, and I am a very regular purusharity, and I can take you out just like that if you do not maintain your yoga." Mm. But if you do maintain your yoga, you can handle it because with yoga, you get the powers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tolerance, power to judge, power to accommodate, power to face, all these powers. And you need these powers because when Maya comes, you will neutralize it by one of the powers. Mm -hmm. And these are called powers through yoga. Mm -hmm. That means if you don't have yoga, you don't have power. That means Maya will make you do some kind of wrong thing but if you have yoga it's not that baba will take away your sins but you will neutralize your okay. tendency to do a sin because you have power so your uh, through yoga power your original baba what he says your original seven qualities that and that's what i was telling you parivartan means go back to your original condition qualities. yeah mm. So when we are talking about these powers, so in golden age, people have questioned that in golden age, is all well, how it's going to be the hierarchy? Like Maharaj, is it on the basis of? Of course, it's going to be on the basis of. The he, powers. he he said, according to your sanskaras mm -hmm. and your study, mm -hmm. two days ago. Mm -hmm. So you have to think. You know, look what we were talking about before. A person who's motivated by love for God and love for humanity, and they are wise, and they can handle power. Mm. They can be king. Because you have absolute power. There was one Murli in which Baba talked about this. You become zone in charge, this in charge, that in charge. You have absolute power over these little BKs who are all you know, going like this. <clears throat> you can kill them if you want. You can. Mm -hmm. You have that power. But it will be held against you and Baba will say, black mark. <laughs> Go to the bottom of the class. But you have the power. <clears throat> so Baba will put power in your hands and check you. Do you abuse your power or not? Yeah, it's it, that's a gem. But it's true, no? Yeah, no, it's a gem. Like that, it's so powerful that Baba does give you power. Baba does give you authority, and he checks you whether you know you are using. Because you authority. come on this study and you become a Didi or a Daddy, they will do whatever you say. Right. So you be careful what you say. Be very careful. Because they put their life in your hands. Don't mess it up. Because he will hold you accountable. Yeah, it's a big responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big responsibility. So the hierarchy is created like that. So, uh, uh, when that there was a discussion going on one day in the Muli that all... Uh, in one of the Muli, did Baba mention that? I just, I'm just checking with you that all the gods and goddesses in Satyu, which is in the beginning, 900,000, all will be called gods and goddesses, but they are not going to be all 
there will be more than Lakshmi Narayan king? No, what he said, and not that Murli, but another Murli, is that the only people who will really be gods and goddesses mm -hmm. are the kings. And everybody else will be Satyugi citizens. Yes. But they will be deities from the point of view that uh, their bodies are Sato Pradhan. Mm -hmm. They don't have any karmic, negative karma. There isn't any maya. So they will be, you know, good people. Um, but they will be like human beings who don't have any vices, mm -hmm. who are naturally soul conscious mm -hmm. and virtuous. And they will play their part nicely. It'll be choreographed. And all those 900,000, the beginning of golden age, all those souls, of course, it's if it, because they are golden age souls, which is after the coronation of Lakshmi Narayan, so they should be pure. But Yeah, uh, but during the transition period, they will be coming along to that point. And we shall see, because you see, Baba... Um, tells us much more about the kings. Right. And the people are those who didn't make it to mm -hmm. be kings, mm -hmm. you know. There will be more than uh, uh, Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi Narayan, only one? King, there will there be, be more? Lakshmi Narayan, mm -hmm. the emperor. Mm -hmm. Then there'll be their family members and whoever. Mm -hmm. And um, there will have to be others because... Remember what we were talking about before. Baba is infiltrating all the Indian royal families mm. and putting high-level BKs in it. So they'll be there. But the emperor, the Lakshmi Narayan. And then we don't know enough to really say for sure exactly what it is. But you can understand that, okay, you have a, a feudal society. Mm. You know, India is fundamentally feudal in nature. Mm -hmm. And since 1947, it's been a secular republic. So for, you know, 4,950 years, it's feudal. And 50 years, it's secular republic. That means not much sense. Sanskaras are being a republic. Mm -hmm. And it's according to birth according to karma, sanskaras, and it's complicated. And we just, you know, you could figure it out if you know about royal families, and you can know about royal families. And uh, um, you can understand that there will be a lot of people who are classified as royals, little royals, big royals. You remember there was a Murli where Baba spoke about the Rai Bahadur and this right, one and that yeah, one. Yeah. And so there's all these kinds of people will be there. And then there will be um, peasants who do the agriculture, look after the cows, pick the fruit, do the gardening. There'll be factories. There'll be industrial type of workers. And they'll be um, business people. Mm. And because who's going to make Lakshmi Sari? She got a new one every day or three or four times a day. So there's got to be artisans, you know. And all the people in the golden age are artists. You don't need any hospitals, prisons, police, army. Those guys will not be there. But you need artists. And you need people to make satyugi food. They're not going to just enjoy flowers and fruits. They will want something else, right? Mm -hmm. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would like to. <laughs> and then all the jewelry, you know, and then who's going to build all your palaces with the diamonds everywhere and so on. So it'll be everybody will be an artist. Mm -hmm. And there'll be kings and queens doing that, and there'll be artists doing that, and there'll be number wise all the way from the top to the bottom, and it'll be like a kind of fairy tale. And there will be not much history because nothing much happens, right? You are describing, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, history starts when there's trouble, mm -hmm. wars, and, you know, all this, everything breaks down in the 
coverage, you know. So there we are. Mm, okay, so so any other question? If you have majority of your question has been answered, but it's one way or the other form. But if you have any other question, yes. One question online is: If we are new in Indian, how do we make our efforts fast and accurate so that we will be ready? Okay, do you want to repeat that question? So, if we are new in Gyan, how can we make our efforts that we can be ever ready? Be ever ready. 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 Fast mm -hmm. and accurate. So, uh, what Daddy Jenki had told me, because whenever you come in Gyan, you're new in Gyan. Right. And you always think you came late. Even right. Daddy Jenki yeah. thought she came late. She was six months after the others. <laughs> so there's always been this problem of what about the new ones? <laughs> and what Daddy told me is we have created the butter. Mm -hmm. And so very quickly, <clears throat> you can be at our level. Mm -hmm. We took 30 years, you take 30 days, you know, and get up to our level. And then, and this is what we do we give people the seven day course and we bring them up to our level. And then we all go together on our pilgrimage of remembrance, right? I remember 25 years back, we just had course and Murli, no meditation commentary, no music, nobody's teaching you, nobody sitting on the gaddi giving you drashti, nothing. And you just... Yeah, I was lucky. I had Daddy Jenki take my intellect and really? <laughs> put things into it, you know, and say, okay, you got it? <laughs> And that was great. I loved it, you know. And she would tell me things that would turn your hair white, but, you know, this very, very high expectations. But I liked it, mm -hmm. and I wanted it, and I thrived on it. So that, that was very nice. But I think that, um, you know, Jivan Mukti in a second – Maybe it takes us 5,000 seconds to get there. Maybe it takes you 500 or maybe 50. Because um, according to the law of justice, even if you come late, it's possible for you to be at that point. But Baba has said that a time will come when the board of too late goes up. And then it's too late because there's not enough time. And I think that will be at the time when destruction is going on to such an extent that there is no time to meditate, no possibility to study, you know, all that. But uh, there's, we're still, you know, under the wire we can manage. Uh, uh, this is only like we had that in that uh, extract of Murli. One of the things I would like you to address is Brahma to Vishnu and Vishnu to Brahma. Mm -hmm. So can you just clarify that? Well, the way he puts it, it takes um, one second to go from Brahma to Vishnu mm. and 5,000 years to go from Vishnu to Brahma. So when he talks about this one second. Well, it's second. like um, if you look at the cycle of time mm -hmm. on a spring, mm -hmm. you know a clock? They have a spring inside a clock, mm. and it gradually unwinds. And then you wind it up, you tighten the spring, right? Mm. So if this is a spring that takes 5,000 years to loosen, mm. you can wind it up in one second, right? Because yes. it's, it's about the reversal of time. And you reverse time by just realizing who you are. And when you realize who you are that clearly, and if you would connect with Baba full on, all the power can come in one second. But what we get like little, little bit, you know, you sit in Tapasya 15 years, you know, every day, 20 hours a day. But how much time are you connected? The odd few seconds once in a while. So a long period of meditation is not necessarily the best. Mm. You want what I always recommend to people is 
engage your intellect with tuning the knowledge because with that, it will take you to a more sustained connection with Baba. Mm. And then you will actually get more than if you are just sitting for hours and hours, but you're not having a sustained connection. Yeah, because there are, because there, we have a lot of people on the Zoom who are new and trying to make intense efforts. Mm. And last year, uh, last month, they had made conscious efforts to sit and meditate. Mm. And they, they found it more beneficial because otherwise to shift at this point of time in like, you know, where we are going through so much, it's, it's quite a lot of effort mm. takes to shift mm-hmm. your consciousness and, you know, connect to Baba and yeah. with so much bombardment of negative information. But this is what Daddy Jenki used to teach me mm-hmm. that, churn the knowledge because you have to engage your intellect with God and disengage it from logic thoughts. What practical tips would you give? To this is, you, you have to go over the murli again and again and again and go deep and deep and deep into it until it disconnects you from sense perception. Hmm. Because the problem is you're experiencing reality through your senses and he says um forget your body Hmm. Uh, forget your body what what was he talking about forget your body how do you forget your body you have to disconnect with it Hmm. then he says forget your bodily relations Hmm. that means you have to see them as souls only not your people because then, you know, the idea is you want to come under the influence of Shiv Baba. Mm. But at the moment, you're under the influence of your body, your bodily relations, your bodily religion. This is the mantra, right? Forget mm. your body, your bodily religion, your bodily relations, and remember me alone. Mm. And we know that mantra. Mm. But then to actually do it, you have to think about it. What does it mean to forget your body? And so he says, okay, Marji Bajanam, you have to be dead while alive. How do you be dead? What happens when you're dead? You separate from your body. And then that means that you don't have possession of your possessions. And so uh, in my practice, dispossessing myself from everything is very helpful. How do you do that? Well, nothing is mine, Mm. right? They say, okay, give me your bio data. What are you? I say, I am Rajogi. Hmm. What else? Is that all? They say, yes, that's all. <laughs> I'm not director of anything, in charge of anything or anyone, and nothing, you hmm. see? Uh, because otherwise it becomes an alternative bodily identity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, so to dispossess yourself you know, people say, oh, you're British. I say, I have a British body. Mm. That doesn't mean I'm British. I speak good English, but it still doesn't mean I'm British. You, know. <laughs> you speak French. It doesn't make, you- <laughs> doesn't make me French. You know, so who am I? Well, you're a dot. Okay, I'm a dot, I'm a dot, I'm a dot. You know, and it really takes a lot of thought to actually become what Baba's telling us about, because it's so subtle. And Daddy used to say to us, you know, this is very subtle. And so you have to make yourself subtle. Mm. And and when he talks, okay, aviakta stage, that's Mm. very subtle. You know, you have to be in your subtle body, disconnected from all this. So... You know, and still you have to be normal, like more or less. Didn't. Don't be kind of out to lunch. <laughs> because, I mean, there are BKs who, <laughs> they, they, you know, you've got to have your feet on the on ground. The, on the ground, yeah. You have to play your part right. and properly and not be some weirdo, you know, and still be connected 
you know, so this is not easy. And you have to go up, down, up, down all the time, you know, because you know, it's not successful to just go off into la-la land. That's not Raj Yoga, is it? Yeah, that's why I was it. You don't have expectation that you go in trance and you just... Yeah, but some people without it going in trance, they go off... La-la land. La, I call it la-la <laughs> land. <laughs> One more question. <laughs> More Purushat should be to work on a stage or to make more praja and expand the yagya or to focus on mansas. You repeat that because the recording. So, <clears throat> so Tivra Purushat means uh, to uh, focus on yourself and do self effort. Work on, work on, work on yourself or, or, or on, your, on your stage. Or you focus on the Yajna Seva and create more subjects or Mansa Seva? Well, Tivru Purusharat means high speed effort. It means it has to be very efficient. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some Muralis in which she says you have to do like all these things all at the same time. Mm -hmm. you remember that? Mm -hmm. And so uh, to me, <coughs> If you're really connected with Baba, mm -hmm. uh, then you pick up what you have to do yeah. and you yeah. do that. Yes. And then also you have a vibration mm -hmm. which people will like mm -hmm. or notice and then they will come. And um, what is the Yagya? It's not making more people Sorry. turn into BKs. It's not MLM. <laughs> 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 no, to me, the yagya is Rajaswaha, Avinashi, Gita, Rudra, Gyan, Yagya. You've got to be a Brahmin. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to sacrifice all the stuff mm -hmm. into the yagya. You've got to transfer all your assets. Mm -hmm. So the yagya is an instrument for transferring your assets from the Iron Age to the Golden Age. Because when you get to the Golden Age, it's very expensive, right? Yeah. Can you imagine how much money it costs to have a diamond encrusted yeah. palace yeah. and that too for 21 births? And you want your fleet of Vimans? You know, you've got to have a lot of money. So, so you, <laughs> you, you have, have to, to create the cost that. <laughs> cost, of, cost of golden age. How about that? <laughs> it's un cost of unimaginable, you know. Yeah. But he says the yagya is for you to invest in. Mm -hmm. It's not contributions, donations, it's investment. Right. And you're investing your time, energy, talents, money, and whatever. And so all of it's invested, and you get a return on your investment, which is multi-million times. So in that way, you get enough money and good relations and good health and all <coughs> the rest of it. So that's okay. But you're not responsible for... The yagya as an institution. The yagya is not an institution, but to, to me, it's a phenomenon. Mm. It's a fire, it's a flame mm. into which you sacrifice everything which is an investment. And what you have to have is faith mm. in God, faith in yourself, faith in drama, faith in the family. There's a very interesting thing that Baba said in the Murli that today whoever is made an instrument mm. is made on the basis of due consideration and that instrument is exactly the right instrument whether you like it or not mm. right mm -hmm. so you have to recognize that and that's a very deep point because your idea of what's right and wrong is not the same as Shi Baba's idea. And he said the instrument is needed according to the law of drama, not yes. according to any other law. You know what I mean? So that's very intriguing to think about. You are never enough. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Are we supposed to store food? 
Well, Baba had said that we should uh, store food, water, medicine, because all of a sudden, you know, if there's no gasoline and no internet, that's it. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank I you. Might have more questions, but maybe some other time. Thank you. Thank you, Denise Van.